with Grandmother Ruby, a medicine woman, and the wonderful, powerful Aisa Yusuf. And Ice Donut. Turtle Girl. Ice Turtle Girl. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And Donut. Yes, the Wonder Dog. The Wonder Dog. <laughs> we are sitting by the river. So we're going to have a little chat here by the river about spring of light. So Grandmother Rabia, what is spring of light? Spring of light is a calling, it's a mission, it's a path that I'm traveling to reintroduce myself to my divine highest self, to introduce myself to who I really am and not who I've allowed others to tell me that I am and believed it and started forming all of these misconceptions, preconceptions about who Rabia is. So along this path, which has been fun, arduous, enlightening, um, joyful, sad, and just all around um, inspiring, um, Spring of Light came into my life because literally Rabia Al Nur is the spring, spring of light. And so, um, and as I sat with that and I started to ask, well, what does that really mean? It's bringing light from the past in, to shine it into the future, to lead the way into the future. We all have to go back to our past at some point to heal, to um, remember. And through that, we gain the strength to and discernment to move forward in better ways. We don't always succeed, but also in that path of the spring, it keeps traveling, it keeps moving. If it has to go down under to rest for a while, it does that. If it doesn't, it may rise. Sometimes it's really shallow and barely trickling. Other times it's rushing and full of energy and life. It brings life to many things and can be refreshing, can be healing, can be so many different incarnations of itself. And as we travel that path, we learn to do the same. We learn to let go of old things and bring in new things. And part of that is to go back, to go back, to go back to our past, not just the past of history, which is another story about patriarchy and his story, but to go back to the really nuance of our soul and spirit. What has called us to come onto this planet at this time to do what? What are the trials and tribulations that we go through to meet our divine highest self, to become who our soul is asking us to be? We're pre-informed before we come. We just need to get out of our way and let ourselves catch up. So I feel like through my journeys, through the work that I've done, through the gifts that Divine Mother has given me, um, the mandate to bring her daughters back to consciousness. Spring Light had many incarnations um, where my learning in my journey as I reflect was to learn how to do, get myself out of the way so I could be a conduit as a healer, to be able to put my hands on someone, to be able to feel what it is they need and to physically be able to heal, um, which I acknowledge every time and fully, it is not me that is doing it. It is a higher source that works through me. And as I've gone through these things and I've gotten rid of my whole stages of, wow, I can do this. No, you can't. Something higher than you is doing this. As I've gone and stumbled and um, created different scenarios for Spring of Light in the path that I was walking. Many were disappointing. They had really fine parts to them, but ultimately it was never what I really felt called to do. And this incarnation of Spring of Light is where I'm supposed to be at this age of 73. I'm finally getting it. <laughs> that spring is gushing forth and the wisdom that is being downloaded and shared with me and through me is to bring the daughters of the Divine Mother back to themselves. 
to be able to heal that womb space and out of that womb space, which is what the universe is birthed from, that black hole, um, that we acknowledge and we accept that our part on this planet and what we need to do is divinely inspired. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to take a lot of flack from that from different quarters, but the truth of it is the truth and to stand strong and firm in that truth and that knowing doesn't diminish anybody else, but it uplifts those who desperately need it and, and have been put in a position that they don't remember that they are divine beings. And so spring of light is washing all of that away, washing that stuff downstream and keeping on moving so that um, we can get back in touch with who we're really meant to be. Mm. More than you asked me, but you asked. I did, I did. <laughs> and speaking of so daughters and bringing the daughters together, Aisa, there's so many questions here, but I guess the first one would be, what is Spring of Light to you as Aisa, not as Grandmother Rabia's daughter, but as Aisa, what is Spring of Light to you? We're hearing of different incarnations and we're hearing about the journey that that is. You have been alongside that journey. You have taken that journey for you as well. What's, what's Spring of Light to you? It's a place for women to come to heal, to become whole again and to trust themselves and to trust in the divine and to trust that there might be obstacles in your life that have happened over time, but that the divine mother always has you and that no matter what ends up happening, she will always be in your corner no matter what and to just be able to be around these women together um, to bring forth what the Divine Mother has to say is important because it's been a lack of that for so long. And so Spring of Light is the catalyst um, to bringing that forth into the world, especially for all women, but younger women who will be the future of the world as we know it for many many generations to come and so having the elder wisdom of spring of light for younger people as myself is important so that we can carry this message forward now so many to unpack in what you just said right now <laughs> especially the dynamics between um younger women and this wisdom from our elders and how to navigate that because you know we have we have our ways of doing things and everyone has their own way of doing things and sometimes they you know there are challenges let's say in navigating them and you know john donut completely agrees as he props up and <laughs> comes middle of the screen here what would you say how would you say spring of light helps with that navigation if at all, or what were some of the, the stops within this journey that had had you reflect on this? Um, Especially in the terms of the incarnations that we hear of. How many incarnations were there? <laughs> many, 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 many. How long has she been working on it? My mother has been working on Spring of Light for at least 50 years and there's been many, many incarnations of it. I've only gotten to experience how long I've been alive, which is 30 years of it, but I've seen a lot of growth around it and a lot of the incarnations were really great until they weren't and then they were something that we just had to work through and work on because that was not the right time for spring of light to become what it needed to be but i have the utmost um faith that this time is going to be the right time for spring of light to be carried forward and finally find its footing and its roots in the world and be able to actually go and women have been helped over time and definitely when the time was needed during those times it was important but it was never it never stuck but i think this time it's going to stick and it's going to be an amazing wonderful thing that why what's different this time um do you think women are more ready or do you think the world is just 
you know, what what is it? Why I this definitely time? think women are more ready and just like what we're seeing even in like mainstream ways of just how like even though women are always going to be under attack because that's just how the world works at this time um there are small things that are happening um that are giving women a voice um uh, when it comes to certain things and so i feel like it is a good time to start doing more uh upliftment of women and our voices and what we have to say and how important we are to society and to the world at large and to the universe and the cosmos and planets and lifetimes that we don't even know about and so i feel like this is the time this is the energy that is flowing and that we should go forth headstrong because the world definitely needs it if we don't do something soon i don't know what's gonna happen but <laughs> The world is definitely like asking for it. Do we know what we ask for? Do you think young women are aware of the healing that is needed? I don't, but I think they know that they need it. They don't know that they know what they need. They just know that they need, they want and need some kind of healing. And they don't even know why or what they need it for. Some of them do, some most of them don't. They're just like I need this healing because you know, life has just been really hard or you know, things have happened in our life that have just been like complicated and definitely like through childhood stuff or through adult stuff or through whatever has happened in people's lives. They just need that that reassurance that everything's going to be okay and that they can continue forward in life and things will actually work out in the end because it's hard to live on earth as a human as we know oh because. yes yeah. but this is another question here and i'd like to ask grandmother rabia here especially about that kind of healing you know we hear people saying oh you know go to therapy i'm speaking to a therapist i'm doing that and that's not to take away from having someone to speak with or someone who studied um you know, scientifically speaking, the things that could trigger or block people. But I think it's fair to say there there's a there's an element of healing that is very clearly missing. And through what I'm hearing now about Spring of Light, you know, maybe maybe a part that um, Okay, donut. Atomic relief donut. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is needed, yes, which is also a form needed. of healing yes, as long as we're you. open yeah, for thank it. Thank you, donut. Um, <laughs> but what can you share with young women, specifically young women, who, like Aisa said, you know, are feeling that there's something missing or that there's something's needed, but they can't necessarily um, put their finger on it or even know where to begin to look for it. How do they find Spring of Light? Well, thanks to my lovely daughter, Aisa, and her tech skills, Spring of Light has a presence on the internet, on YouTube, and see, this is how the patriarchy works. <laughs> Male donuts. Donuts. I know. <laughs> anyway. Just as you talk about Aisa's technical skills, which we will be needing yes, to edit this. Edit, edit, edit. But <laughs> yes. at any rate, um, through the internet, through word of mouth, um, spirit also is the main thing because um, that is the gift and the blessing that we can start to understand and recognize more. That when you really want to connect with something and you are in contemplation of it if you're in prayer meditation you're just thinking hard about it if you speak of it that you are um wanting or in need of something we all are born with guides and, and angelic forces that work with us we have um, family and friends that have passed to the other side that are still very active um that also watch us and see you know and can offer help and guides and assistance um to help you to 
through dreams sometimes, through those that are gifted in that way, through visitation, through a books that you're inspired to read or a YouTube channel that just pops up when you're watching something else that says, hmm, look at me, or an Instagram or whatever the other venues are that um, bring things. And then just meeting a stranger sometimes in the grocery store, online, you know, in line somewhere and just feeling inspired to make a comment and that person says I know something that can help you or I've heard of this or that and the connections come in so many ways just like in nature when you look around at the abundance of, of creation and how all of these things interplay and interact and the, and the messages get passed um, those vibratory messages get passed to people as well I believe that young people are in probably each um, stage of life and each um, <laughs> time periods in history women have had various things to face the one thing that has never changed is that the onus and the um, burden that has been put upon women from ancient times to carry a untenable weight and one that is unfair and misused and misguided, misdirected, um, that diminishes them in so many ways that they are reduced to only having a very limited role when their role is so much more important and so much more vibrant than that. And so young girls grow up in these households, some with family, some with mothers, some without, some with grandmothers, some with, and then depends on if they even understand what's going on. So many are working so hard that they don't even want to look around at anything else or lift their head because they're just trying to get through that day and the next day. And so I call it the bait and switch. It's like, um, well, how can I say this without being offending, even though I can't possibly? <laughs> uh, I am not anti religious. I believe religion has a place. And it's a very helpful um, and um, what within it brings the comfort and salvation and the ability to believe in something higher and to have help to guide. There is religion, and then, as some people want to say, then there's spirituality, which is an is not really divorced from religious practice, but it is an expansion of reaching higher into um, your connection with the divine through your taking time to fine tune yourself and be available for that connection to happen and the tools and the ways that you can do that and um, and so I believe like with Spring of Light there are so many women I can't tell you that come to me and young women even young girls sometimes that are inspired to ask me a question and I'll say if I understand what it is I can I will speak to it as I know it you can also pray on it you can also meditate on it and receive your own guidance but as I understand something I will um, always have a caveat I don't know I never want to ever be perceived that I think that I know everything that I'm an authority on anything but I am open and available to receive um, certain things. And so therefore I am able to share on, a, on another level, on another frequency, let's say, than some other people. But more and more and more women, especially men as well, young boys as, and girls as well, are vibrating on the same frequency or ones that are you know coming up through those different vibrations and frequencies and they're looking they're hungry and they're searching because the things that are in place now are not working for them and the men herd mentality that they love to talk about um that going along with things that don't feel right for you that diminish you but because that's the popular thing and these people that you hold up and you elevate to such high levels as they demean you in their language and their songs and the treatment of women and girls um, that is something that's such a disservice to 
um, us, but it also teaches us that we have to empower and claim our own sovereignty. I don't know why, but I've got this inkling and something's pressing and speaking to me and no, they're not insane and don't need to go to a therapist. It's spirit speaking to them that I always wanted to do, be an artist. I always wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a doctor, a healer. I always wanted these things, but I can never see myself with those, as those things. And I was told that I could never achieve those things. Those things weren't for me, they were for somebody else. But something is whispering in my spirit saying, yes, you can do this. And so they've left jobs, they've left partnerships, marriages, um, countries, sold their house and moved somewhere else because spirit is calling them out. Spirit is, and I address Without the mother's presence, everything else is out of order. And they have all sorts of little trite sayings about, you know, not pleasing your wife and all that. They don't do it anyway, but the fact that they do <laughs> have those sayings is kind of a chuckle. But, um, yeah, women are waking up in, in droves. And so there are more uh, people, more women talking about the divine feminine. There are more... Uh, references to the goddess and they're not going to stop saying that because they recognize that from the very inception before all these other things started to take place and take root that many 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 thousands of years ago that the people equated birth created the universal flow to the female body and it was something sacred and something that they um, protected and held high and as that's been diminished we have to rebirth ourselves we have to find that again and that's why I say reaching from the past bringing it back to the future bringing it into our lives now that we have a higher place than we've ever thought that we had and we have an abundance of help to help us heal I'm not against therapy I think it's an awesome thing and it needs to be if it's coupled with spirituality um, because just textbook knowledge and textbook things and people's theories like Freud and all these other people that come up with these theories and everybody's like, oh yeah, that's right. That's just how it is. No, that's not how it is. And so it, well, while it has its place and I recommend that people that are troubled and need help that they seek therapy, but also find your spiritual strength. The good thing about technology, which I'm not in as everybody knows <laughs> gives me the shutters however there's abundance an abundance and wealth of things that people post on YouTube videos of you know chakra clearings of um, meditation of inspired music to help you find that inner peace and inner soul so that you can go deeper into yourself to reconnect and to find, allow that inner voice of your soul to speak to you and to teach you. And also, when you see these things out there and you see these young girls struggling, don't walk past them and make comments about them. You know, some may receive you and some may not, but some may just need a smile or reassurance that you're beautiful. Just stop. Sometimes just stop. And you see a little girl who's overweight or something and you know she's struggling and you know she's being made fun of. Reach into that spirit of yours and touch hers and say, wow, you've got the most beautiful eyes. You're the most beautiful girl. I love your skin. I love the way you dress. I, you are, just, you know, you just made my day just walking past you and, I, and you made me smile. Just to uplift somebody's soul like that and start that person on their path. Of healing. Thank you. So what I'm seeing is that the way that women are being diminished and young girls are buying into it and they think that their bodies being used um, in inappropriate ways and, and the uh, that it's sexuality and sensuality if you can sell everything from pretzels to toothpaste by stripping a woman down or having her um, expose herself and equate that some kind of way with you want that kind of toothpaste or that's the best snack to have <laughs> um, but young girls I've seen young girls at 
so I've seen even young girls as young as three and five years old being taught to grind and mothers cheering them on and you know you're already teaching your young daughter that her body um, to entertain and to be sexualized at such a young age then I hear these conversations of these girls that are 13 14 and 15 um, talking about angry about a 13 year old showing her body and sleeping with these men and who does she think she is her body's nothing not being outraged that this young girl is doing that but but scorn for the fact that she, who does she think she is she's not as and, it, and it's just soul stripping to hear those kinds of conversations and it's like and it's because women have lost connection with their own sovereignty with divinity in fact most um, pictures, most speech about the divine, about what the God force is, is scripted in male language, in male picturing. Yes, there's Mary and there's a few other ones, but dominantly it's all about the males. And when a person doesn't see themselves reflected back to them, then they buy into this whole thing that they're really not, they're not the divine ones. It's somebody else and somebody else who has control over them and somebody else that um, can dictate their value and their worth. And it's just one of, and then other things start to happen. When men started to commoditize the earth and split it up and sell land and, and all of that, and then it became cattle and it became other goods and then it became women. And then the women started being sold and women's bodies started to being sold and it's just escalated, escalated. And then women take part in that. And it's one of the most, um, when we talk about racism and things, how unholy that is, how unholy is it that women have been reduced to a commodity as well? You can be angry, yes, about slavery and, and the injustice of that. And it's no less um, horrific then what happened to the Jewish people, what happened to the African, to the Native American, to the people in the rainforest that's going on right now, who are the spiritual beings that are holding this earth together with their prayers and their um, ability to connect their spirit to the fact that we are all part of this land and we're part of something higher. Women don't in other in mainstream cultures, as they like to call them, or the so-called dominant culture, it's nothing. It is dominant because dominance to me is overlording something on somebody else. But the good news is that women are waking up. I've met women at con. So many incarnations of Spring of Light. You've been through some of them. You said it was a 50-year journey for mm -hmm. Grandmother Rubia. But you've you've been part of um, the latter part of that. Where through this journey, where was your biggest frustration with these incarnations? Because you clearly recognize the potential of this. You clearly recognize what it's done and how it's been part of your life, um, and the potential power it has to uplift other women, like you were saying, especially younger women to to gain this wisdom from our elders. But where has been some of your biggest frustrations in bringing through these incarnations? Like you feel there's something different this time. Um, did you feel that before? If so, why not? Um, and yeah, let's just share with us some of the biggest challenges in bringing this, this new incarnation through. Um. I don't know if the women who wanted to be a part of Spring of Life before were as committed. And they were still learning, like we're all still learning, but they were like at the very, very beginning of not even being at the beginning. So it was very hard to deal with people who were not really there at all. So it was like, okay. And then people just, they didn't understand and things would happen and they would do things and they would be things that would things that would be hurtful to people and so then they didn't work out with what needed to be and even though they were good resources and brought good things 
about, they were not the right vehicle for that. So they were not, they didn't work the way we needed them to. And what are some of the things that are needed? Like we, we're seeing, especially a lot of young women who are trying to, you know, get their work together um, into a way where they can share it and grow in community uh, alongside other people, especially ones that are targeting or looking to uplift other women. And, you know, myself being one of them as well in trying to see, okay, there's so much to be done to get this off the ground. What are some of these things that you've had to, you know, weave together for Spring of Light? Mm. Well, we've tried to find places to have Spring of Light like retreats and things. Um, one time it would work, the next time it would not work. We would find a great place and then that would fall through. Um, working with elders as a young person and getting the elders to commit to what they needed to do. Um, because the work was, the, the per like myself, wanting to help my mother with Spring of Light through technology or whatever it is, and having them not cooperate in the right way is a little frustrating because it's like <laughs> i'm trying to help i'm trying to help these elders do what they need to do for them for them and for the for the women and for the community and for everybody and then you know and it's you know it's whatever humans you know people are not always going to want to cooperate all the time and maybe it wasn't the energy at the time that was needed and that's why they were not you know cooperating in the right way and I feel like now people are more willing to cooperate and more willing to bring this forward whether it's through retreats or whether it's just through videos on the internet or whether it's through being here at the river and inviting people to come to the river or whatever it is I feel like this time is just different because the energy is different and the women who are a part of this seem more connected and they seem like they really actually want to ha have Spring of Light be this amazing thing that we know it can be. And I think this is just, that energy is just there this time. Hmm. What would you tell young women young people in general, but particularly young women who are working with elders, who are about to embark on this journey that you've been on for, I, I don't know, A almost your entire uh, life. My life. <laughs> um, what, what gems would you share with them? Um, definitely be patient and don't give up on them because they're just, they're elders. So you have to really be patient with them because the, they definitely ha have this knowledge and they're definitely wanting to do these things. They're just not always going to do it on your timeline. And that's okay. So what you do is you try to make it work. And if it doesn't work, you say, okay, it doesn't work right now, but we'll think about it and come back to it. And maybe it'll work the next time. But you don't give up on them because they, they what they have to say is really important. And if we don't like take their knowledge and their wisdom now before you know they go to the spirit world then we won't have it and you know they have a lot to teach us as younger people and we need to be taking the elders wisdom so that we can carry it on to the next generations so that they can understand this knowledge as well and now what would you tell the elders who are about to deal with younger people there is one right next to you <laughs> this is a safe space you will not be pushed into the water <laughs> i'm the one sitting next to the water hey up? there's water on both sides water yeah, is life surrounding true. us all just know that we're not trying to be you know as young people we're not trying to like push your buttons or like whatever but we just as young people we are very like forward moving because there's just a lot and for my I'll just speak for my generation in general there's just a lot there's a lot and like not to say there wasn't a lot for their generation and generations in general there's always a lot but it's just like we're trying so hard to not do the same things that the elders did 
there's really, really good things they did, and there's really, really not so good things that they did. <laughs> and we're not trying to carry the bad things ahead. We're trying to really stop it right now and continue forward in a better path than they were able to, or were told to, or led to. We're trying to just nip that in the butt, leave that in the past, and continue on in a better light than we had before. And so it's not that we're trying to like, you know, I know like the elders are like, well, I have X amount of whatever and, I, and, and that's it. But we're like, well, we have all this time. We have to do all these things because we have all this time. Like, yes, I know you've lived all your life and did all these things and like, this is your last hurrah. But like for us, <laughs> for us, it's not our, uh, it's not our last hurrah. We are the ones who have to carry this forward and we have to be the ones to like go forward with this. And so if we're, if we're not, if we're not like going forward and we're stuck in this thing because we're just like, I know I've lived a lot of life. So it's hard for me to like it. There's an example of going forward. <laughs> And amazing we'll keep getting confirmations and confirmations just as we speak but yes because we have a lot more life to live than the elders do it's easier for them to get stuck in right now because it's just like they've lived all this life and so right now is right now and that's it and they'll just keep going on with the rest of their life and then it'll be over and they'll go to the spirit world and it'll be fine and whatever but my generation has all this life left to live and so we have to keep going and we can't stay stagnant and we can't just stay in this, you know, energy right now. We have to keep going and going and going. And so all we need is the elders to give us this knowledge and this wisdom that they have and we'll carry it forward. But we have to keep going forward. We can't just stay here because why would we stay here instead of going forward? That's the point. Grandmother Rabia, what does this sense of urgency um, that Aisa is talking about, what does, what does it bring to life in you? What's, what comes up to you when you hear this sense of urgency? Um, obviously, some of the frustrations that have been previously ex expressed but just, by, just by looking at the screen. But what does that bring out for you as an elder? in general but also within spring of light well as an elder in general uh, i don't know how to divorce the two things but um and i understand her frustrations because you know our generation our tools and our wheelhouse were marches and things like that and they were doing those at first and then they started to realize marches aren't working you know, yes, they show the numbers and everybody's all excited for a minute and it's uplifting for a minute and all that. But when the real change doesn't happen, how many resources were lost? How many better things could have been done with those resources um, than to come and pay hotel and flight and all this stuff and restaurants and all that? You could have been taking homeless people off the street and putting them in housing. Um, young people have and understanding of the urgency and I feel like they're also understanding more and feeling the all of the damage that has been done each generation has seen it to some degree but now it's at critical mass and this generation is we don't have time to play we don't have time to march anymore we don't have time for empty rhetoric we don't have time to hold your hand and prop you up and you know we respect you but we would like you to work with us but it, but we will not let you get in our way and they're very frank and I'm so proud of them that they are because a lot of the elders that are out there speaking yes they've done awesome things for their time they're very deserve the respect that they get however You've got a whole new breed that came out there, you know, with Sandra Bland's killing and, and George Floyd and all the murdered and missing indigenous and women of color all over the world that nobody's reporting on and could care less. But, you know, if one white person goes missing, it's like the world stops and 
yes, that's terrible for them and their family, but there's no, um, and they're looking and they're saying, well, wait a minute, you know, that might work, have worked before, but this is not gonna be swallowed any longer. And, and all of the things that have contributed to marginalization, and that doesn't, that means with climate change, with um, the lack of resources in communities of color, um, with the dumbing down of everybody in this country by not wanting to speak truth, and they're demanding truth. You're not going to tell them anymore that African American history or Native history when you're digging up graves of children and they're like, yeah, but you know, we don't want to talk about that. Let's just throw some flowers over there and say some prayers and be done with it. No, that's why this is the time they have inherited is the time in the prophecies of truth and justice rising and women leading. And they are taking that to heart when you look at all of the women. And this is what Spring of Light is here for is to encourage that awakening, but also to ground it in a spiritual basis. It's, it's good to have the political and all those things, but if you don't have connection with spirit, if you don't recognize that not just people, these birds, this river, these trees, the plants, everything, these all are put here by creation and you have, they have every right to be here as well. And so there's gotta be this empathy that comes from a spiritual knowing and guidance to enhance and wake people up. And if you're, and I have to say, you know, just because you're an elder doesn't mean you're wise, doesn't mean you need to be lifted up. Just like I think a lot of these celebrities and people that are demeaning women and all that, but they're making millions of dollars by diminishing women um, need to be thought of in another light. What, that's not, wholesome, healthy, you know, yes, it's my right and it's my body and I understand all of that conversation. However, there is the truth of a spiritual underpinning of all things. And when you connect with those things, your mind starts to expand, your spirit starts to expand, you start to reclaim yourself and you cannot you will no longer allow yourself to be diminished. You will no longer allow humanity or anything else to be um, diminished because there's a higher something that's working through you, talking to you, um, and that I believe these young people understand that. I believe when they poured out into the streets um, while we watched this whole horrific murder of George Floyd, like you're watching a YouTube video, this touched people in such a way and the outrage in young people was so fierce that it wasn't a one day march and we'll come together next year and commemorate that march. They're like, no, this is gonna stop and we'll be in the street every single day around the world. It wasn't just black people, it was Native American women who understand what the symbology of a jingle dress dance was and they came out into the square with their drummers and they danced that dance of healing for um, George Floyd and his family, then Sandra Bland and all the ones, Maimuna Youssef, when she sang that song about Sandra Bland and that, you know, that could be your daughter, you're, rolling, you're cutting your eyes sideways and this and that, and what was she doing? No, no longer, no longer, no longer. Just the fact that the videos, North Star, all these ones that she's putting out um, that uplift her generation are getting them to think and getting them to ask her, you know, where did you get your spiritual grounding from? Well, her mother, grandmother walks on water, Wapajea, she taught her and she's passing it down and she's passing it down and, and grandmother Wapajea and I work together and it's like the understanding that all of the daughters are our daughters, all of the sons are our sons. But until we heal our daughters so that they can make better choices and they can demand higher and better for themselves, um, then they will help the men to understand because they won't just allow anything to go down or any or suffer or, or be complacent in um, things that they know in their heart is not right. You know, you always get inklings when something doesn't sit well with you. It doesn't sit well because it's not supposed to be there. So I think empowering 
um, women to um, grow in that way is what the purpose of Springalite is. Uh, Issa's a very strong daughter. I have two other daughters who are very strong women, Khadija and Rabia. Um, and it's amazing to me, um, being strong doesn't mean you're lifting weights or you're out there, you know, just all in everybody's face. We had a conversation about that earlier, um, how quiet strength. When you see something wrong, you know, you do something about it. And I'm so proud of Aisa in high school when she was sitting in a classroom and she noticed that there was a young lady in there and there were girls outside the door that wanted to, for whatever ill-conceived reason, they wanted to beat her up or something. And Aisa just quietly sat there and observed. And when everybody left the classroom, she got up and walked over to the girl and she said, I'll walk with you. Are you ready to go? And she was so relieved and so happy to have an ally and those girls got out the way when I used to walk through the door and it wasn't because she said anything to them she just looked at them but her spirit is so strong and her sense of justice is so strong and her nurturing and caring for this sister of hers was so strong there was a recognition in their spirit uh oh you know, just move out of the way. And the respect, I think, was more so. It wasn't because they were afraid of her. It was the respect for her that made them back off. And her sister, older sister, called our house later that evening crying and thanking Aisa for, thank you for standing up for my sister when nobody else did. And it's that kinds of things that I want to see young women to, um, develop and to own up to and to be able to step forward in that confidence that um, my I've got my sister's back, you know, mm. I've got the children's back, I've got the men's back. And again, I mentioned men because I almost feel like I'm obligated to and it's not because I'm anti male or whatever. I'm married and been married almost 50 years <laughs> for a man. But at any rate, um, you know, but right now, it's because the female has been diminished so much underfoot almost um, that in order for the balance to take place, women have to rise. They have to take their rightful place. And they're the teachers of the children. Actually, they're the teachers of their husbands too. So, um, you know, you're treated the way that you allow people to treat you. If you uh, enter into a relationship and, and you don't feel that there's there's warning signs always on both sides um, but there are warning signs that tell you just because you love somebody is not going to make them change so you do you and you be the best you can and the highest and you protect yourself you protect your children and your family and through your strength they will learn to be strong as well. We're our te the big first teachers of our children. And so how they see us act is how they're going to act and how they're going to respond. Not always, because there's some that goes off the trolley, but still, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Okay, this, I mean, <laughs> too much, so much to digest. Um, I'd like to, at least for this round, close with your advice, Grandmother Rubia, to young women like Aisa around the world who are trying to preserve this traditional and ancestral knowledge and teachings and trying to do it in a way that is, I don't want to say timely, but for lack of better terminology, in, in a way that allows for this time to engage more of the younger generation, but are facing such pushback, such backlash, predominantly from our elders, some of them men, most of them men, but still also partly because of concern or worry, um, as you said, some women are partaking in the continued holding back of young women who are recognizing 
we're here for a reason. There's something that we need to do. There's a calling. What advice would you give young women like Aisa who are ready and rising and facing these challenges and don't necessarily have the understanding um, or the support that she has in you? Well, always be respectful of elders. I mean, unless they're doing something, you know, really terrible to you. But just, um, if you don't agree with them, you don't agree with them and, you know, but always speak respectfully and treat them respectfully. However, again, being an elder does not necessarily make you wise. And sometimes it's just that you're old. And so you have to make that decision and that discernment about um, and always trust yourself when you're dealing with um, elders and their advice or anybody that doesn't that's all these people out here that are on spiritual paths and doing all these workshops and webinars and this and that and the other um, and have these modalities that you pay if when they charge you thousands of dollars then you run the other way um, but I for me it would be be still do the work. Do the work on yourself to ask your guides. As I said, we're all born with spirit guides that walk this path with us, that help us, that some of that intuition that you might feel is them talking to you that are trying to lead you in ways when you're stuck and then all of a sudden the light goes off or you decide to pick up a book or you go the other way. Those are your guides helping usher you along um, to be um, still. There, take, turn off that um, loud music and then just learn to settle within yourself so that you can hear a larger voice that's out there, that you can intuit um, the help that you need. Because as you start to do that and as you start to meditate, which is, you know, meditation doesn't mean you got to sit like a yogi and do all of this stuff. It just means be still. Just be still before you get out of the bed in the morning. Just lie there for a few minutes and just ask for guidance from yourself as well. Um, you know when you come onto this planet, into this life, you're fully scripted. You just need to act it out. And so ask yourself for that information. Um, feed yourself with things that, that are going to lift you higher and eliminate things in your life that aren't doing you any good if there are things that so really settling um, within yourself cutting out all that extraneous noise and um, getting comfortable with yourself getting comfortable with being in stillness uh, turn off that loud music that's jarring your whole body. We work with electromagnetic energy anyway and frequency. So when you have all that loud boom, 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 it's jarring your nerves and your whole nervous system and all of that. But when you listen to listen to soft things, listen to strings that carry the voice of the wind, sit by a river, just sit by a tree and just be at peace within yourself. And if you're feeling stressed, Go hug a tree. Trees, but always thank it because trees are living beings as well. And they are in service as well as we are to them. We're all in this together again. So, you know, if you're feeling stressed sometime and your eye is drawn to something, go check it out. Go sit still on the earth because that's our mother ultimately. And that's who is going to um, help you to center yourself and ground yourself. And look and find... Um, elders that resonate with you. Spring of Light is one path, but there are other paths too that you can take that if you feel comfortable with that person and you can develop a trust in that, but always, always, always ask yourself, take a deep breath. How does this feel to me? Be discerning. Um, yes, I can offer you Spring of Light and I can offer, I'm not infallible. If there's anything that I can tell you, it is to sit still connect with divine energy um if you were wishing the best for your daughter and the highest things that could be done for her think about what those things are and claim them for yourself and then give them to your daughters and lead by example that she's watching you what do you accept in in behavior and speech and all of those sorts of things in your diet in your 
you know, when you get excited about becoming alive and becoming whole and healthy, they're going to get excited too. They can't help it. It's just infectious. So my, my, um, uh, my knowing is that the universe is pregnant with possibility that it is um, really the, the responsibility, if we choose to accept it to ourselves, to reach back, reach back, reach back, reach back, because we are divinely feminine created and that our wombs carry the voice of the universe like the black hole does birthing, bringing forth. Um, and there's no shame in that. And it doesn't diminish anybody else by you claiming the sovereignty of your womb and what you go through as a woman does not diminish any other woman. It is thousands and thousands and thousands of years of diminishing millions of women who are in desperate need of healing and have every right to do so. I hope. I hope. <laughs> See, got the chorus up. They're like, oh, yeah. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, one last thing for the both of you. Three words that excite you the most about this new incarnation of Spring of Light. We will start with Aisa. Mm. Actually, we'll take a word here and a word there. Um, joy. I'm just gonna say that. Eh? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Beat you to it, haha. Haha, -ha, yeah. Um, gratitude. Participation. Sovereignty. Light, healing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.